Hey, Tommy. What's good? Uh, yeah, you just woke me up, so... <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, it's so, a Saturday. Yeah, I know. Well, we got something to do, so get your shit ready and I'll be there in 10. Uh, okay. All good. I'll see you, bro. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye. gonna do? I know what we're gonna do. Alright. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Jonathan. How are you? Good. Welcome to How the YouTube level. Thanks. <laughs> We're just uh, loading you for, for the test. Do you want to have a look at the cars? For sure, yeah. We'd love sure. to. Come on in. Thanks. So, welcome to the workshop. Uh, we are just packing up the truck because we're going testing next week. Um, you can see here our uh, three cars. And uh, this car is just about ready to be loaded. It's a uh, so for the original spec car, a single seater, carbon fiber chassis, 1.8 liter engine with 300 brake horsepower. The weight is around about 680 kilo with the driver. We have slick tires uh, and wet tires, but both by Hankook. So if it's uh, dry rural on slick tires, if it's wet rural on uh, uh, wet weather tires, um, it's quite a bit of aerodynamic on the car. Uh, the front wing is quite powerful as well, so we tune the car a lot more. With the um, aero uh, settings, we can change quite a lot of stuff on the car, the camber, the toe, the caster, the geometry, the springs, the anti-roll bars, the yeah. ride heights, etc, etc, etc. So we can tune the car quite a lot to uh, suit it to the racetrack and the driver style. Um, as I said, this car is just about ready to go. Uh, we're going for two days testing in Valencia uh, next week. And the driver will be actually a, a sim driver. He was a Red Bull um, e, uh, F1 driver, e-sport driver. Um, Cembo Lupazzi, he's Turkish and he now does uh, quite a bit of GT4 racing and he did a race last year with us in Hockenheim and he's uh, testing more this year and maybe one or two races at the end of the year to prepare for actually next year uh, for the European Championship. Uh, hopefully we can put the, the package together and the budget together because it'd be cool to have a, a sim driver. We had another sim driver actually this year already in New Zealand. Oh, yeah. That was um, Igor Fraga, uh, he's a PlayStation uh, Gran Turismo driver. Uh, really, really good driver. He won in New Zealand with us, very smooth. Uh, this is the specificity about the, um, the sim drivers. They are very, very smooth compared to other drivers, okay. I have to say. And the transition from the uh, eSports to the real car is usually pretty smooth. It's more physical, obviously. This yeah. is the big difference. But overall, they do pretty well and, and, and they have that idea. They, they know how to race, they know how to extract the most of the car. Uh, yeah. Their feedback is not bad, obviously it's a bit different with the real car, but it's super interesting, it's quite enjoyable to work with them. It's a different approach as well, you know, they yeah, yeah, come no. from a, a background that's maybe not as fortunate and, and, and mm -hmm. uh, they had to work quite hard, so uh, we had, I mean, Chem is working really hard in finding sponsors, um, Igor had to go through the Gran Turismo thing to actually oh, get wow. to a certain point. Um, but yeah, it's super, super interesting and, and quite nice to, um, to work with. Yeah, drivers with a different approach in general. Uh, obviously, you have the other drivers that we usually run uh, and that we have run. Uh, we have two of them in Formula One now, Lando Norris wow. and Lance Stroll. 
um, they raced for us in, in New Zealand and then hopefully we get another couple, I would say uh, Robert Rothman and Yuki Tsunoda, they have a, a big chance to go to uh, maybe Alfa Romeo, maybe uh, Haas okay. for Roberts and then uh, for um, Yuki probably it's going to be Toro Rosso, uh, hopefully that goes, that goes to plan for them. Then we had other drivers who go to Le Mans and um, actually we had a driver who won Le Mans in GT with Aston Martin this year, Alex Lynn. And all these guys, they, they actually raced for us in the past 10 years and it's cool to see them grow as well, you know, and this is what we yeah. try to do as well with, um, with all these guys. And, and going testing is a big part of it really, so yeah, we're getting ready. It's uh, a small crew because um, uh, it's a bit of a special year this year, okay. so uh, we're loading everything up. Some of the guys, um, well the truck is leaving tomorrow on Sunday, it's Saturday mm. today. So it's a long hours. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it's um, it's a smaller amount of equipment we take to the the, the testing because we don't take all the the boarding, uh, the garage stuff, the decoration, etc. Et yeah, okay. It's more about the efficiency. Makes sense. Kind of yeah. stuff. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, I'm excited actually. It's uh, it's good. We had less races this this year because we decided to focus on 2021. Already okay. With the the current year. It was a bit difficult, but this is kind of the start of the 21, 21 season already. So okay, cool. Can we have a closer look at the car? Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. You see, as I said, it's ready to go, so we don't transport them complete. Um, as you can see, the wing is upside down because we carry three cars in the truck. Um, okay. And for space, actually, we, we transport them a little bit for transport. Makes sense, yeah. Um, so, the hand tires, we usually carry them with, with the wet tires. Um, just in case they get damaged or puncture or anything like that, because mm. it's uh, it, anything can happen. It can always happen. <laughs> For sure. As you can see, um, I can show you the steering. It's a ah, cool okay. piece of equipment. So this is the steering wheel. You have the shift lights here, the steering with all the information, uh, revs, speeds, uh, brake balance, lap time, etc., etc. Then they have the pit limiter, uh, a button to uh, press if they feel anything weird in the car, so we can find okay. quickly in the data. The radio communication. Um, we have the reverse button, so you have to engage reverse with a specific procedure uh, for safety reason. And then you have the start button, which starts and stops the engine at the end of a session. Right. And also you have the paddle the cool shift, paddles. Just like in the, yeah, yeah. Paddles, just like in the <laughs> GT cars. Actually, it comes from race car originally, but these are these are the paddles. It works a bit differently. It's a magnet, basically. Yeah. Uh, it's not a button. Um, and that's about it. You have the series of uh, LEDs for the alarms as well. And then we always indicate which way, because you can change the brake bias, uh, the brake distribution front to rear okay. in the car. And the driver can, that, can do that all the time. So we have a little sticker that reminds uh, which way it goes. That's cool. And we usually put a, a little uh, track map as well. So okay. the driver can say the caller number and report yeah. the, the behavior of the car. And it's quite a, a, a nice reminder on that side. So yeah, it's a nice, sure. piece, of, nice piece of equipment. Uh, on this car, it's a, it's a, a foot clutch. Um, okay. But on uh, F1 cars, F2 and F1 cars, it's a hand clutch. So it's uh, you have two paddles, uh, two extra paddles on the steering, and that's how they okay. actually clutch, uh, engaged and disengaged clutch, which is a bit different. Uh, so it's a it's a single seater, so it's a bit different. You have the driver assist there, the pedals are there, the steering column, and there is nothing related to the engine at the front. Okay. The engine is all here at the back. So you have the radiators on each side for the water, uh, the intercooler, because it's a turbo engine. Uh, and then you have the engine underneath here. Uh, the gearbox is all the way at the back with the diff. And uh, the suspension is here at the back, and then you can also access the suspension here at the front uh, of the car. Uh, as I said, with the springs, the roll bars, the dampers, etc., yeah. etc. Et it's a fully adjustable damper as well, so you can okay. change the damper and the rebound. It's, uh, yeah, you can, you can do quite a bit. You can Very customizable, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, there's a lot of stuff and the more you go up in the categories, the more settings and changes you can do as well. So. Yeah. And here, in this category, and actually all the categories up to Formula 1 now, everybody has the same car. Okay. So there is no development as such, everybody has the same equipment, all the drivers have the same equipment, the same cars, the same engine, the same chassis. We cannot actually do any or manufacture any parts ourselves anymore, Okay. Uh, for cost reason, uh, yeah. to save the cost. And, um, and it's up to the driver and the team to make the difference with the setup, with uh, um, the preparation, how you analyze the data. There's a data logger, like a black box. Okay. Car. And with that, we can see the driver, the engine, the chassis settings, 
and we can monitor everything and then, and then make some changes to the driver um, driving style and he can actually adjust a little bit to what the conditions of the car is but we can also change the car and check the ride heights and you know, the That's stiffness cool. and the stuff like that so yeah it's quite a lot. Do you reckon coronavirus has had an uh, influence on the business or not? Massively. Okay. Massively for two reasons. One is because obviously we are uh, public events and it's, yeah. uh, it touches a lot of people so the first reaction was to close everything, all the circuits and stuff like that, so we couldn't actually go testing, uh, we couldn't go racing, so the first big impact is that the, the season, all the seasons have actually started, but it's a lot more condensed now, because we're doing the mm. equivalent of 10, 11 months, or 10 months in probably three or four months. Oh, wow. So we have okay. triple headers, like three weeks in a row and stuff like that, so it's a lot, uh, lot different on that side. Um, and then the economy is more difficult as well, so in the end, uh, we lost some drivers, this is why we decided to not try to race at any cost this year anymore and okay. really focus on next year. Um, but it's for sure the amount of drivers that are around with sponsorship and, and partnership and stuff like that and, and the budget are, are not the same as the, at the beginning of the season. Uh, a lot of them have lost sponsorship during the season so they can't oh, wow. do the whole season anymore. So uh, yeah, it, has a, it had a big impact and um, we just have to cater for it and, and prepare for next year really. This is, this okay. is the big thing. Yeah, cool. Thanks for uh, showing me around. No problem. You're welcome anytime. Thanks. And we'll now load the cars up, I reckon. Yeah, we are nearly ready to go. Just the okay. cars in, the tires, and off we go. All right, cool. Ciao. Bye-bye. All right, so cars are loaded up. Yes. Number one, which is the set. So uh, we'll see what happens there. And then... Uh, so we're gonna go and have some fun on the sim. Oh yeah, right. Bro, this is my car though. Yeah, I told you, that's your sim later. <laughs> Who's gonna set the, the best lap record though? I'm probably gonna beat you. Do you think so? Yeah, of course. Okay. I'm gonna beat oh, you sorry, guys. No, this guy is gonna destroy oh. us. Ah, but it's, it's, his, it's his simulator though. It's not fair. I'm just making sure that everything goes right. That's it. Yeah, true. He's gonna tell you about an apex, where to break. Everything possible. Oof, yeah. Right now, now I'm excited. Yeah, yeah you should be. <laughs>